Good afternoon, everyone. You're all very welcome to another Alpha Capital Group uh, weekly market run through. Um, going through the volatility that took place last week, last week in the financial markets. Um, now we talked about it last week, expecting volatility the end of the first half of the year, beginning of H2 2023. So, of course, we'll be looking at the data. We'll be looking at the price action in the markets and seeing how does that dynamic reflect into current market conditions. So. I suppose without further ado, obviously first Friday of the second half of the year brought in NFP on Friday, which saw a significant volatility in market dynamics. Now overall, um, on Thursday, we had very, very strong ADP employment numbers. We followed that up with um, some fairly resilient, fairly stable Jules numbers, although coming in slightly um, less than expected on Thursday afternoon. But then on Friday, we had the NFP figures. So the unemployment rate still standing at 3.6%, holding a lot of that residual strength. We have seen the labour participation rate remain quite solid. And we've overall had another pretty solid month in the markets. Now, although we did come in a little bit less than expected, we did see the uh, indices um, particularly the S&P 500 actually um, moved progressively higher through the course of Friday afternoon after the data was released uh, and somewhat faded into the weekly close. Now, with that, we have seen gold um, prices reflect higher this week. We've seen um, a deterioration in the dollar um, pricings, particularly off the back of Friday's NFP numbers. So we'll obviously be looking at that very, very closely. Now, this week ahead, of course, looking ahead to... Um, the week ahead, we do, of course, as I said, have um, earnings reports coming out by the big banks. So we're starting to have now the next set of earning reports. Um, a lot of the banks, JP Morgan, BlackRock are coming out at the tail end of this week. And then the following week after this week, we'll get, um, I suppose, a lot of our the remaining financial stocks, but then the rest of everything else. So you'll have your tech, your consumer discretionary, uh, staples. Um, we've got all of the different energy related stocks as well in the US coming out over the next week. So we'll, we'll have a barrage of, of um, stock earnings being reported over the next, let's say, two to three weeks. So we're starting to see the tail end of it this week. And then, of course, we'll be looking for that to continue over the next kind of two weeks after that as we approach kind of the mid and latter parts of July. So I suppose without further ado, really looking at the price action this week, um, we talked about it last week, the likelihood of having that very, very strong close into the stock markets last week, into the end of uh, quarter, end of month, and of course, end of half yearly. And we saw that very uh, clearly regurgitated where we had very, very strong closures to the first half of the year. We had funds, institutional performance uh, on the performance charts actually proved to be quite resilient. But then what did we see? We saw on Tuesday after the 4th of July celebrations as US markets kind of returned to normality on Wednesday, we saw a very, very clear deterioration in stock market performance. We saw it sell off Wednesday and then more poignantly Thursday. We did see a little bit of volatility, as you'll see here on the daily charts on the S&P 500 on Friday. But overall, um, for the first week of H2, you can see very, very clearly that the stock markets did close lower. So it'll be interesting to see because we know that the broader residual trend that we've talked about over the last number of months has been very much bullish, right? You look at where the markets has been in March, um, way down here at 4,000, 4, in the spot markets, up near 4,100 in the futures markets. Now we're seeing S&Ps continue to pro progress highly uh, and to the upside at the end of H1, close very, very strongly. But we're seeing that little bit of profit taking coming in this week as indices create short term lows again. And that then becomes a little bit more obvious and visual when you look at the price action, particularly Wednesday, as we said, Thursday will be found short term bottoms. We did get that little brief pop back into this liquidity level up here, just shy of 44.50. And we had that apex move higher and then lower back into the range of where we started from on Friday. So overall, you will see that the NFP numbers on Friday, although fairly resilient, fairly stable, um, we have had significant short-term volatility with those apex moves higher and then lower through the course of the day. But if you were to go to, let's say, a 15-minute chart and look at the data specifically between, let's say, one and three, that kind of Bar barometer hour before the open hour after the after the open um in the u.s and obviously of course factoring in the you will see some fairly decent volatility on both sides so that has been something that's been very very clear and apparent as we've seen the s&ps turn lower we have seen 
Uh, NASDAQ and Dow Jones start to see a little bit of profit taking. We talked about how last week how bullish um, the tech sector has been in, in Q2 of 2023 with that really strong movements in the NAS. And of course, those cyclical movements uh, won't always be the same direction. You'll see a little bit of profit taking, you'll, you'll see pullbacks, and that's exactly what we've seen with the NASDAQ this week. Wednesday, Thursday, following the S&P's lower, aggressive move higher on, on Friday, initially off the back of the NFPs, but since then we're back in this range, back into this 15,000 level with this kind of truck and trailer apex formation up, profit taking, and then back down on the intraday movements. And I suppose that's been even more uh, regurgitated back into the European markets, okay? So if you look at the European markets, your DAX, your Euro stocks, your, your FTSE, but mostly your European indices, you will see some very, very heavy selling in the DAX, some very, very heavy selling in Euro stocks on Thursday and Friday, as we've seen a lot of profit taking in European indices. Now, of course, if I was to bring up the DAX German 40 chart, German indices, you will see as well that very, very heavy selling uh, profit taking obviously on Monday coming through a little bit of selling uh, after that on Monday, Tuesday, more selling Wednesday and Thursday, even further breaking out of these three month lows that's been holding here between the 15700 and 15800 handle and of course markets has seen a little bit of a, a pullback on Friday but still trailing consists considerably under this range and I suppose that becomes the narrative this week right we've seen indices close bearish first week of H2 will we see that re replicate uh, as we approach earnings season now for uh, Q2 obviously the earnings reports for the quarter just gone by and that's going to uh, definitely fact or, or affect uh, European indices as we've seen European indices has been the, the considerable outlier this week with fairly uh, considerable uh, declines in that regard now same again with the euro stocks it's just about holding on to this range that we've kind of talked about this monthly uh, range really since mid-April uh, and even probably go back a little bit before, before that into kind of the early April parts of it. You will see that the euro stocks has just been considerably consolidated at all-time highs. DAX was at all-time highs. It's now sold off 700 points this week. Euro stocks has followed suit selling off uh, approximately 200 points. So that is alone is a fairly decent sell-off in euro stocks but when you go up to the weekly charts you'll see euro stocks very 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 consolidated just at these all-time highs and as i said with the dax if you go up to the weekly charts as well you'll finally see that breakaway that strong break weekly close underneath and then it becomes a case of well we've had a very very strong run-up in european indices for the last nine months now nearly 12 months as we approach from last autumn um, it'll just be a case of will we actually start to see some profit taking right we've made new all-time highs it looks like we're seeing some consolidation we're trying to see the markets if the markets are rolling over well initial signs as that they are rolling over but it'll be interesting to see whether that becomes even uh further pronounced this week if we see let's say the dax euro stocks have another bearish week well then you can start to see some decent pullbacks coming through into european equities and then we look at the FX plane, we look at the, 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 the relationship between gold, dollar, and obviously the stock markets broadly, okay? Um, now, I suppose the, the big kind of talking point this week was how go, how the dollar DXY, the, the, the dollar currency per se, was very consolidated around this um, 103 handle, right? Because 103 was that kind of benchmark barometer this week, just awaiting the chart to upload. Um, you will see a lot of consolidation here between kind of 103, 103, 50. And of course, on Friday, we did see the DXY break lower back into those end of June or mid-June lows around 102. And we are still holding considerably above 102. But I think in the early parts of this week, that becomes the narrative to see, do we actually continue to see forward or dollar weakness? And if we do see that 102 handle break this week, then you're really looking at uh, a move progressively lower into the 101s, right? So you're talking 101, 50 and sub 50 uh, really being the barometer this week to see if we can get back into the May lows, as we see, which is kind of somewhere in here between kind of 101 and 101, 40. But uh, a very kind of clear grind in the DXY last week, we see a little bit of profit taking. Um, more pronounced really kind of Wednesday than we started to see a little bit of selling coming through Thursday and then that became even more pronounced on Friday as we took out that 102, 80, 103 short term lows. You can see that there are very clear break of the lows and just very clear straight line selling price action. So with that weaker DXY, we've seen gold prices progress to the upside. We've seen Euro USD, we've seen GBP USD in the FX markets do progressively well uh, as we've seen that hedge, right? Because we know that, right, if the DXY is rolling over, then you're going to be looking for that fundamental narrative, that fundamental alignment in terms of stronger Euro dollar, 
stronger GBP USD, likelihood that you're going to see probably AUD USD go higher and you're going to see dollar yen pull back against what's been a fairly fairly bullish trend over the last month or so so if we look at the fx markets just before we finish on gold today you will see um just when we load these charts very very quickly um you will see your usd obviously as i said with that dxy rolling over on friday you will see that your usd chart aggressively breaking out back above 109 again so 109 has been that really barometer for this week uh, post um 4th of july that 109 handle um, we had multiple reactions off it. We've been kind of holding these short-term lows from the end of June at 108.35, 40. So we're very much tied in that 60-point range until, uh, as I said, kind of Thursday evening into Friday morning where we had that very, very aggressive break on NFP. And then we really saw that euro dollar move progressively higher off the back of the weaker DXY. So knowing that correlation can really help because we've had that kind of three-week kind of pullback in terms of euro dollar bears making gradual lower lows, finding a bottom, and then that aggressive breakout to the upside. So from my perspective now, given that we've had an aggressive breakout through 109, it'll be interesting to see if there's any sort of short-term pullbacks against that uh, initial impulse, right? So that initial impulse that took place in, in EURUSD to the upside, we talked about it there with DXY. Can we get short-term impulses back into 103, take the last of that liquidity out of the markets, and then really start to continue down lower? And I suppose that's going to be the big thing on Monday. Uh, post NFP and pre earnings, as we as we start to have the earnings, the the initial parts of the earnings in the latter end of this week as well. So keep an eye on that one. Obviously, a very very aggressive break in your USD. I think that one hundred nine handle. If, if if there's any sort of buying opportunities, it would definitely be in kind of short term pullbacks, short term movements. And if you look at the one hour chart as well, you can see that very very clear consolidation, aggressive move higher. So then it just becomes a case of do we actually continue to progress through Friday's highs, up into one tens. Or do we actually get a short-term pullback to mitigate this order flow that we had, this aggressive order flow on Friday? Look for buying opportunities around 109 and then look for that continuation to the upside. So that's really kind of the, the play to kind of watch in the early parts of this week in that regard. GBPUSD, uh, personally speaking, I was looking for a deeper pullback. Um, 125s was really kind of the, the narrative that I was looking for. We did find bottoms last month into month end at 126. We had a very, very aggressive break into 127s. We had that kind of truck uh, of, of consolidation between 127 and 127.50. And then, of course, with that rolling over in the DXY on Friday, we've had that aggressive break in cable back up into these um, June highs, which is coming in at around about 128.20, 128.40. Now, again, if you look at the price action on the daily time frame, you'll see right short-term order flow. If we just take these out for a second, you'll see price action closing at june high so now it becomes a case of is 129 the barometer you've got a lot of upside now that we mightn't even see short-term short-term pullbacks we might just see cable prices gbp usd just continue to progress higher because we know when you look at that broader weekly trend that weekly narrative price action still is looking to uh, go higher and of course that strong weekly closing friday could still be very keen to try and mitigate a lot of those levels up here, as I said, in previous videos between kind of 135, 136. So I think this week, any break of 129s is really kind of still looking at that bullish trend. Whereas other than that, if we if we start to see a little bit of a top out, then you can start to maybe see short term pullbacks again. Um, but the DXY, I think, is going to be the big move this week and just seeing how does that play out. And lastly, then with, with the dollar yen, the, the 145, this area up here around 145.50, uh, 60 level was kind of the, the narrative we were kind of looking for at 145 to 146. Um, we have topped out at 145. You will see consolidation over the last three, four days of this week, um, particularly kind of Tuesday, Wednesday. We started to see a giveaway Thursday, and then we just started to see that really fold on Friday as the DXY sold off fairly heavily. And then it's really just a case of looking at it there. Well, that was the, the narrative that we'd posed that even with the weaker dollar, which was fairly blatantly obvious over the last six weeks or so, um, could we see even further weaker yen um, to allow that pullback? Well, we've come pretty close to it. We've got highs, we've got lows, we've got new highs. It certainly looks like we're in for another short-term pullback in dollar yen. And really just kind of repeating this narrative of highs, lows, highs, lows, the whole way up um, as we see prime kind of price action develop really since those mid-March lows at 130, 131. Now, since then, I think this move back into 139s, 140s is the most opportune area. And I think then it just become a case of, well, can we start to see some buying opportunities down in here, as I said, between kind of 139, 139.50? I think that's really the big one to keep an eye out on. 
And then really last but not least then in the Aussies, well, we, we saw that, um, we talked about it last week, this kind of value area around 66, right? Last week, the week before, 66, we've taken a, a, a considerable period of consolidation. We took lows with that aggressive move up through the range, taking the highs and the upside. So we in really one fell sweep of this kind of three, three and a half month range, we took lows, we took highs, we came back down into this value area at 66, aggressive move higher, and now we're holding 67. So kind of this week, Price action been very kind of curtailed between 66 and 67 and really now looking to see can price action take 67 to kind of continue progressing higher. If we take out 67s, that's really insinuating or giving the idea that we're going to probably have weaker DXY, looking for that DXY to potentially slide. And as a result, then looking for this kind of bottoming structure that we're seeing here on the daily on the Aussie dollar continue to progress continue to upside and then look for moves back into 68 and 69 to previous highs now if you look at fib retracements within that just from short-term lows into short-term highs um with the manipulation we're getting very very clear reaction at 61.8 that golden ratio as well um and then when you look at the shorter term order flow we had um obviously very very bearish uh, price action on four hour lows highs lows short-term highs very very clear reaction new lows finding consolidation short-term highs but not really taking out this range then coming back in again taking the liquidity from the bottoms and then that aggressive move higher which saw that strong closure just underneath 67 so i think 67 is the barometer if we see 67 being taken out i suspect you're going to see that kind of continuation and trend but of course let's wait and see how the market dynamic opens up on monday um as i said post nfp um in that regard all right so then last but not least then is gold so of course with the uh, with the DXY that considerable sell off as we talked about on Thursday and Friday in the DXY that's fueled this gold price recovery. So gold um, saw initial price discovery in the in the twenty five thirties on Tuesday, um, off the back of of obviously the Fourth of July um, bank holiday in the US. We have seen price action obviously top out, and then as I said Thursday Friday we got that second run up again into this 30 handle uh, which is really only visiting the um the month end highs that we saw in june um sub 1930 so it's really just a case of seeing how does that play out it definitely looks like we're seeing a short-term bottom here but price action is very much refusing to um take out this 1930 handle 35 so i think you would look to see 35s being taken out taking out these wicks taking out these highs to really springboard a move back into the 60s back into the 70s but we know for gold prices to get back up into 1960s 1970s you would need that uh further continuation in the dxy that's further selling and that's really something to kind of watch this week in in terms of correlations and then try to reconcile that within the price action accordingly all right so that's pretty much where we are as we end uh, the first week of H2, obviously with the, the volatility that took place off the back of NFPs, uh, non-farm payrolls in the US on Friday, and of course the bank holidays that we saw earlier in the week as well, um, in, in terms of the market dynamic. In terms of data this week, just a quick look at the calendar this week. As I said, we do have some earnings reports coming out Thursday, Friday with banks uh, starting to report in the US this week. Um, but if we just um, take a look at the calendar for the week itself, we've got uh, Chinese CPI tonight in the Asia session so that'll be something to watch um, we have obviously got UK data Tuesday morning followed by German data so European session will be quite interesting on Tuesday and then of course Wednesday Thursday we've got Kiwi interest rates we've got UK inflation we've got Canadian Bank of, uh, Bank of Canada interest rate meeting so there's going to be something to watch there so we're going to have plenty of things to discuss and go through this week in our daily notes and of course we will try and get another video out during the week to evaluate the price action as it's developing and as I said Thursday Wednesday Thursday so quite a lot of data at this week through the course of the week we tend to see Wednesdays Thursdays being the busier days but we have quite a bit of data on Tuesday Wednesdays also seem to be a busy day and as we know with Thursdays also having uh, interesting data out particularly in the US with PPIs European ECB monetary statements coming out and monetary accounts and then of course UK and Chinese data as well on Thursday morning so obviously this week trade safe um, and of course we will be back in the middle of the week with daily notes as we said and of course another weekly recap at the end of the week